So again, I'm Justin. This is Tux. We've also got Kieran right there. He's another new Cipherino. Matur C. C? What? Say again? Snee. Snee. Oren? Snee. Matur. Keon. Have we met before? Okay. I believe you for now. Yeah? I'm Chris. Chris. Keon. Oren. Snee. Madher, Oren. Keon, Chris, MD, 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 got it, okay, MD, yeah. Um. Start time like almost now ish. Okay, so I'm Justin, this is Tux, and that's Kieran at that end of the table. The three of us are, are a new Cipherino. That's our species designation. Uh, so let's go down this side of the table and see if we can get names. Sure, I'm Lane. Lane? Yes. Lane? Thomas. 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 Rahul. What is it? Rahul. Rahul. Rahul, Thomas, Lane. Tom. Tom. Not Thomas. So, uh, uh, Lane, Thomas, Rahul, Tom, MD, Chris, Keon, Oren, Snee, Madhur. All right, so far so good, we'll see. Um, so let's have a little like, uh, it, like 20 questions, but without any like, goal toward any answer, just to see like who answers what. So like, who walked in the room primarily because uh, they're like very concerned about like the future of the species in terms of, of privacy? Like you, your your primary impetus is socio-political maybe we'll say. Who's in that camp? Okay, so you've all got some kind of a, if it's not you, then you then you probably, see if this raises your hand, you've got something in your life where you need to like manage secrets in a distributed app. Is that you? Raise your hands if that's you. Okay, this is gonna be a little bit of like cold reading. I'm getting like a woman with a G name from that corner, uh, a Gloria or Georgia. Uh, no, okay. <laughs> um, okay, who is here primarily because they think this might be like low-hanging fruit that they can hack on and win money? Who's like, is anybody in that, in that camp? All right, we got one. <laughs> okay, um, so, you know, as dApps move into a domain of usability and reflection on userhood, that is to say, reflection on the sovereignty of the pecking of the keyboard and the in the smearing of the touch screen at the other end of the app, inevitably there will be secrets. So, you know, I'd like to initially just sort of dispense with the idea that the only possible, I'll wait for these folks. Start by dispensing with the idea that the only real, uh, the only real thrust for building something with something like new cipher and you probably could extend this to all cryptography if you were sort of willing to think about it with sufficient abstraction that the only impetus is that there is 
a need for enduring secrecy, this idea that you have that will remain in a limited audience until the heat death of the universe, right? That's not really what this is, or at least not only what this is in theory. What it really is, is you've got stuff that you want some of your users to be able to see and others not see for some period of time. <laughs> and you need to figure out how to handle that scenario without relying on the centralized infrastructure that until now we've been told is the one right way of doing that. Primarily, I hope what comes to your mind there is the bullshit like, certificate authorities and you know the, 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 there's this whole infrastructure this whole secrecy industry that is sort of led down one path and like many other components of the distributed web what we're talking about here is starting from a similar intention and forging instead down a different path you we got a couple of classes on my screen here right now Maybe you've heard of these crazy characters. They've been having a secret discussion since the early 70s, uh, ongoing, unbroken, between Alice and Bob. And uh, look at that, like half the tutorial room are, are my colleagues now. We'll see, we'll wait until we have uh, like an uninterrupted, un uninterrupted four gorly block times before we like reintroduce. <laughs> Um, so here you have on the screen, again, what I'm trying to do here is facilitate a discussion that helps you sort of understand the, the particulars without resorting to slides and sort of keeping you in our code base. Okay, so um, these, two, these two folks, Alice and Bob, who's heard of Alice and Bob? Let's have a hand raise there. Okay, who's like never really, who's like, what, Alice and Bob, what does that even mean? Anybody? We got, we, okay, we got maybe a couple. Okay, so um, when you want to discuss the abstractions of communication between two parties, typically what's done in sort of orthodox cryptology, if that's not too unreasonable a thing to say, is that we say, well, Alice sends a message to Bob that only Bob can read unless something, some way in which the system can fail occurs and then maybe we say Eve can read it. So we, we talk in terms of these people that are communicating with each other, right? But of course in, a, in an environment of web applications they're rarely people. They're often applications that are trying to talk within or between different servers and clients in the old model or we might say decentralized nodes in the new model. So Alice and Bob have been around basically in, in, full, in a full-throated way uh, since uh, public key cryptography became widely used. This is the idea where Bob has a public key and Alice has a public key and Bob can encrypt a message for Alice by using Alice's public key and then only Alice can receive it by using her private key. So even though the, the, the cryptography is asymmetrical, right? There's a private key and a public key. You don't use the same key to decrypt that you do to re-encrypt. Nevertheless, what we do with this narrative is cause the narrative to become symmetrical because there's nothing special about Alice or what she's capable of, nothing special about Bob or what he's capable of. Now, this works okay in the traditional speak when spoken to client server model, I guess. Um, it breaks down though fairly quickly when you're talking about the authority structure of a decentralized ecosystem. So what New Cipher does, this is my, we, we, sometimes we try to come up with an elevator pitch and see how few words we can say it. This is what you've just heard is the most words I think I could possibly say. This is my eight minute, really long, slow elevator under maintenance sort of ride. Uh, <laughs> so what New Cipher does really is uh, we sort of dredge the world of cryptography papers and cryptography primitives and we build some of those cryptography primitives into powers that are wielded by the characters in our narrative that allow you to do things that you can't do with public key cryptography alone. So the one that we'll show now is, uh, is a power that a character that we call Ursula has. Let's show Ursula here. Now, when I talk about these characters, I want you to understand that these are not merely examples that we use in the documentation. These are actually classes in our code base. Why is Lawful not showing up there? There we go. So here's Ursula, for example. Now, Ursula has the power.
power of proxy re-encryption. This means she can act as a proxy between two communicating parties. She can take ciphertext encrypted for one public key and at the behest of the authority of the policy, that's Alice, she can re-encrypt the ciphertext for a different public key to be decrypted by a different private key that matches that second public key. We do this with proxy re-encryption, which is a cryptographic primitive that uh, was sort of, had a lot of intellectual yeast in the late 90s. There was a paper about it in 1998, and then never really went anywhere, never, never achieved the kind of mainstream prominence that public key encryption has. Now, we believe that one of the reasons for that is that it is very, very helpful to have a swarm of decentralized, disinterested nodes who are less likely to collude with one another than uh, Google running servers within its own, you know, Google essentially is a central authority, or Facebook, right? That's who we trust now with this model. We say, well, nobody else can log into my Gmail, so I, I, I guess only I can read my email, <laughs> right? We sort of throw up our hands at this idea. and. Uh, it's encrypted from Google to you, <laughs> and it's encrypted from you to Google, uh, but the decentralized ecosystem challenges us to do something more than that, to create, in some cases, end-to-end -end encryption schemes, but at very least, encryption schemes which utilize the full gamut of possible cryptographic primitives in order to have the kind of secret management that you need in your, in your distributed ecosystem. So... Ursula, for example, again, is the one that we use proxy. This is the power of proxy re-encryption. And when you make a policy, you select a number of Ursulas. So you say, we call the number of Ursulas that'll be in your policy, we call that N. And of those Ursulas, Bob needs to visit at least M of these. So this is an M of N scheme. And M of N schemes are a great example of the kind of thing that are very, very challenging to do in a disinterested way. And by disinterested, I mean resistant to, to arbitrary collusion, resistant to what sometimes are called Sybil attacks. Hey, there's another character, Sybil, right? There's another classic character in the cryptographic net narrative. Uh, the blockchain is good for this. And so what New Cipher does is dredge up these cryptographic primitives and say, hey, maybe this thing that didn't achieve mainstream prominence before can now because we have a, the blockchain. Okay, so what I'm going to do now I guess I'll sing for a minute. So let's walk through a quick module. Even if you've never seen Python before, try to stay with me in the logic here. I think, I'm, I'm hoping this will be easy enough for you to read. We call this our Finnegan's Wake demo because we encrypt line by line passages from James Joyce's novel Finnegan's Wake. So the first thing we do is make an Ursula, as we've discussed above. Now, on line 43 in this comment, we introduce you to another policy that I already talked about verbally a couple times. I, I, I'm sorry, another model that I already talked about verbally a couple times that we call policy. Okay, so a policy is Alice authorizing Bob to access something. Alice sets a policy that says, I want to share this resource with Bob. Alice does this by denoting this resource as having a label. We'll get to that in just a minute, but that gives you sort of the four corners of policy. So here are the details. We want to say when it's going to end. In this case, it's five days from now. We set our M and N values. I don't know why I have one and one there. That's silly. Let's do two and three, because I've been messing with this file, actually. Actually, let's do a whole bunch of control Z. Okay, that's better. Um, <laughs> Um, Riot. Forgot to close down Riot or something. Yeah. 
and our label is whatever, secret files and stuff. Now we introduce you to Alice, the authority of the policy. Now remember, in this sort of uh, narrative from yesteryear, Alice and Bob were essentially, although they were characters in an asymmetric cryptography scheme, they essentially did the same thing. They were essentially symmetric with one another. Here they do different things. They're not quite the same empowered actor on your network. Alice is the authority of the policy, decides who's in and who's out. The who's in and who's out, we call them Bob. So, uh, there's really nothing that we're passing here to Alice that's particularly important for the purpose of this discussion. Just understand that sort of this is where some of the internals go. And if you want to follow how our thing works, uh, you can dive down in here and see what these different options do. Now check this out. We're going to make a policy public key. This is the key for which everybody is going to encrypt when they want to share stuff with Bob, with all the Bobs. <clears throat> Alice can do this uh, before she's even created the policy, which is to say before she's even done anything on the blockchain. So here's where we get that public key right here. <clears throat> we do Alice.get uh, policy public key from label. And uh, it's worth saying at this point that we have um, CLI and, uh, and sort of REST-like, although I, we're not convinced that RPC or REST are s sort of still appropriate in a decentralized network, but we have an HTTP interface uh, that can do each of these steps as well. Okay, now we have Bob. Bob takes essentially the same arguments as Alice, which is to say they're not really worth talking about this second. Okay, Alice here starts what we call her learning loop. She starts learning about the network, and now 74 is, is perhaps where the interesting thing happens, that you wouldn't see in any crypto cryptographic narrative that I'm aware of outside of New Cipher, Alice grants to Bob on this label with these values of M and N. This means that in order for Bob to receive messages on this label, he'll need to visit any M among N Ursulas that our network selects. Let me pause for a moment here to say that the the economics of the situation between these two are such that Ursula is the one who has to stake the new cipher token, right? So Ursula demonstrates that she's following the rules of the network by staking a token, a work token, not that different really than other work tokens you've seen around. We've got a cool, interesting things that make it different. For example, we can determine on the blockchain whether Ursula has attempted to mislead Bob by giving back garbage, that kind of thing. But other than that, it's a sort of fairly typical work token. And Alice here uh, will have to pay for the policy in Ether. Now, Alice puts her public key somewhere for Bob to find later, some kind of a side channel. Here we just store it in memory. And then Alice can disappear completely from the internet. Okay, now Alice is, is you know, disappears, some time passes, and then we have Bob. Now, now with Alice offline, it's time to get out of D, move up to like A. With Alice gone from, from the internet, Bob can join the policy. So maybe at this point in your mind, you've started to map who Alice might be in your app, who Bob might be in your app, and then we've already talked about Ursula, and I'm gonna introduce one more character before this is over. If you have a clean mapping to each of these four characters, in what you're trying to do in your app, we'd love to hear about that. Our table is, where's our table? Right outside these doors, basically, right? Our, yeah, right out into the right here. So do come and talk to us. We'd love to hear if you have a one-to-one -one mapping to Alice and Bob, and I'm going to introduce Enrico the Encryptor in a little bit. If you have a one-to-one -one mapping to each of those three, we'd love to hear about that. Um, particularly if it's some kind of a weird in-game universe case, I'd love to hear about that because I, I'm very interested to see sort of how uh, gaming secrecy evolves on the blockchain. <laughs> And here uh, we're going to read, we, we, we get, the, get the path of the book, we read the book, and then we're going to iterate through the lines in this book, Finnegan's Wake. And now we make Enrico. Enrico needs the policy public key. And he can, in, he, he encrypts a message here, and you see he gets a single passage uh, and a signature. And then he leaves his public key somewhere to be found, and then he disappears from the network himself. And now look what Bob does. Bob reconstructs Enrico with that public key that he left behind. And now Bob can retrieve the original message. 
Now, I don't know, I just went through a crazy heck of a lot. I basically took you through a year and a half of New Cypher discovering our identity and developing uh, this sort of schema and protocol and way of thinking about this. So let me stop now and ask who has questions. I, I, I'm, uh, what do you got? Yeah, I, because we only have six minutes left and I'm not sure what it really shows for me to run this thing except to suffice to say that it does run. But I, I mean, I'm happy to, but I, I, if, we, if there's a discussion to be had, that'd be even better. Uh, uh, starts with a K. K Keon. Keon, yeah, yeah. 74, this is why we have line numbers. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so the question is, uh, how dare I describe line 74 as having some unique quality when it really just seems to be traditional M event encryption? Maybe you're thinking of like Shamir secret sharing or something like this? Yeah, okay. Um, so imagine for a moment what would happen if this were naked Shamir secret sharing. By the way, I think that's groovy, and we probably will deploy a character that does exactly that in the future. Uh, you know, but we're sort of really interested in, in showing that we can bring a fairly novel cryptographic primitive to the forefront before we just, you know, lean on something that is as already as well promulgated as Shamir secret sharing. But in Shamir secret sharing, what would happen here is that I, I suspect that you wouldn't have Bob here on the other end at all. Right? Because Alice doesn't really grant to Bob. And Shamir's secret sharing, if, if people don't know, Alice can split up a secret, an arbitrary secret, anything, you know, she can take her journal and divide it among N holders of the secret, and any M of them can put the secret back together. Okay, so this is useful maybe for the, the sort of traditional scenario pre-blockchain that sometimes is discussed is if you uh, want to have like your master secret to your password manager that maybe uh, you wouldn't give away in life, but maybe you'd you know give three or four shares to very close friends and knowing that no three of them would collude to impersonate you, but uh, in the event of your untimely death, they could come together with these three shares and have access to all your stuff, right? So um, what Shamir's secret sharing would do in this is allow M. Ursula's to collude to get the secret. You see, here, and this is what makes this different, and, and unique might be too strong a word, although I can't say I've ever seen anything done like it in a decentralized blockchain incentivized way, is that only Bob can get the secret. After the, after the M. Ursula's, what we like to say is that Bob goes on his journey with a capsule and a secret inside. These are all classes in our code base. And Bob's journey involves asking, imploring at least M. Ursula's to attach C frags, ciphertext fragments, to that capsule. Once he has M. C. frags, he can, with his own private key, obtain the secret. Say again? Only to him? Well, Alice can add other Bobs to the policy. So let's say only to those Bobs who've been granted on the policy. Right. Other questions? How about like really beginner? Who who got lost a little early and wants a little bit of like like who who has? Okay, who feels like super comfortable with everything I've said and you totally get it? Yeah. Okay. So I mean, there you know, there's some there's different levels of following along. So if you're a lower level of following along, ask a foundational question because other people almost certainly have the same question, and uh, it'll be this is your time. Yeah. No. What we do is build blockchain-based characters who stake our token, and those characters follow the rules of the network that we lay out, including using these encryption schemes that have some kind of need for uh, disinterest. In other words, some kind of anti-sybil attack, anti-collusion, uh, or just the economic impact of needing to follow the rules in a verifiable way or risk being slashed. Right. Every, we, we don't build anything specific for any corporation or government. At least that's certainly not our typical wheelhouse. We're building things for you. We build things that are on the blockchain that are there for you to use. 
uh, and uh, you know you have to pay a little bit of ether for them, right? So you are anyone building our a de decentralized application with any kind of a secret to manage are our clients. Yeah, Chris. Uh, so we do have smart contracts that are written in Solidity. With the exception of those smart contracts and a little bit of Bash, the entirety of the rest of our code base, more than 99% is in Python. So the way that the interaction happens is that the, uh, when Alice grants here, for example, uh, what's happening under the hood is that we're running a smart contract function wherein Alice samples the network for who is staking our token and selects from among those who are staking our token that have already vowed to stake beyond the end of the expiration time on line 77. So that's like one example. Another example, which is not depicted here, but which might be interesting to you, is that if Bob opens up the capsule at the end and there's apparent garbage inside, he can initiate a dispute using a smart contract and the, uh, the, the, there's a smart contract that can actually take as input the ciphertext and determine whether Ursula has given Bob garbage, which is a suggestion that she is not doing the right thing by our network. And in that case, uh, she will be slashed some of her new cipher token. So those are the sorts of ways that we have interactivity uh, um, with the smart contract. We don't do, if you were interested, if you were like making a top five list for incredibly compelling use cases for smart contracts, I don't know that this presentation would be on your list, right? What we use smart contracts for are to enforce what we think are already novel and exciting cryptographic concepts that just needed a little bit of help, a little bit of help from a smart contract to enforce some kind of anti-collusion or good behavior scheme. Because without those, the cryptographic primitive is sort of hollow and never went anywhere. Right? So again, this is a cryptographic, proxy re-encryption is a cryptographic primitive from 1998. It's not super new, and yet it's not a household name yet. We think in part because there has not yet been a blockchain to enforce the anti-collusion properties that are necessary to really do it right. That's kind of what we're staking on. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So I didn't get your name. Uh, my name is Dean. Dean? Good to meet you. Yeah, hey. Yeah, they, uh... Dean has been sent here from Portland to distract me <laughs> with a topic that I could discuss day and night. Uh, his question is, is there some kind of a node discovery mechanism or why am I able to just do Alice.grant, Bob? Yeah, there is a node discovery mechanism happening under the hood here. Uh, really what's happening here literally in this module is that Bob is in memory. Um, but, but in terms of how the network works, that would normally be the case. In ter it's not impossible. Uh, but in terms of how it would normally work, uh, we have a node discovery. We, we've actually rolled our own node, node discovery. We have a blog post about that. Uh, and uh, our new cipher works actually without the blockchain at all in, in a federated mode. You can see I have federated only here. And that means that there's no blockchain component. They just discover each other. But of course, that's super susceptible to a Sybil attack. You wouldn't want to use such a network. That'd be, you know, that'd be essentially the same as, as trusting one party with all of your... Uh, with all of your re-encryption nodes again. So could Bob buy data from Alice via a smart contract? Like, because I think you need to bake like some secret into the smart contract at that point. Yeah, we want pay to encrypt is a thing. This is like, uh, uh, we're, we're right on schedule there because I think we're about five minutes into the Q&A, which is when we usually get that question. Um, so good, you're, yeah. Uh, we don't yet support a pay to encrypt scheme. There are a few different ways that you can imagine it being done. One is for one that could be done with really very little further ado would be for Alice to grant already generating the cryptographic material necessary, ha handing it over to Ursula just as she does now, but Ursula refusing to perform the task until Bob pays. That's one way to do it. Um, and there are several other ways which we uh, have thought of which we're happy to discuss, uh, but maybe that prompts you a little. That is not functionality that's built into our network yet. It's also not something we're planning to build before mainnet, but I, it's something that if it comes to a vote, I will happily uh, vote in favor of shortly after we launch on mainnet. Yeah, Mahur. So how much like bomb you create? How how what? I don't think we know yet how much ether policies are going to cost. Right now, it's Alice who pays, not Bob. Right now, it's Alice who pays. Yeah, it, it, but again, it could be Bob. It wouldn't be. There would be no incredible gymnastics to make that happen, and, and that's maybe something we'll address shortly after mainnet. But um, 
we don't actually have really a number. I think we actually have it defaulted to zero right now while we poke and prod. Is that right, Karen? Yeah. So we don't know. Um, depends what kind of a market there is for it. I mean, you know, I, I, and by the way, I know we're underneath global event, but let me say loudly and proudly, we're not sure Ethereum's the right blockchain for us. No, I, I don't know if anybody is. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. We are planning to deploy on the Ethereum blockchain, but if the economics line up in such a way that either Ethereum doesn't make sense or uh, the use of a micropayments uh, technology on top of or, or to the, off to the side of Ethereum make more sense, um, you know, it's, our, our code is, is sufficiently portable. Uh, and for you, that means that in terms of hacking projects, um, we don't need to see anything that necessarily relies or, or assumes that Ethereum is the end-all, be-all blockchain. We are deploying on it for now. We do have a lot of confidence in it for now. Um, but we are interested in seeing any of the variety of ways that you might use uh, the technology, even if it means that you sort of have to skim over the details of payment. I think it, we might be done here. We're done, right? We gotta wrap it up. Yeah. We're wrapping it up. All right, well, listen, uh, Dean, Madhur, Snee, Oren, uh, Kian, Chris, MD, everybody, everybody in the room, thanks so much for joining. We'll uh, come to our table.